Hello, I'm Sheer. I'm from Midwest Wales and I'm 15. I've got two main growing areas, the food forest and the veg garden, and I also keep a herd of dairy goats. Well, I took cuttings of a black currant bush a couple of years ago and put them in a bucket of water and they rooted like, you know, a few months and I don't know, I just caught the bug then. So in 2017, my grandfather put these apple trees in and then last year in lockdown, I came through with a strimmer, strimmed it all and started managing it a bit better. And then in the autumn and winter last year and early this year, I laid cardboard down like Charles Dowding and put this mulch over the top, which is old horse bedding. Did sort of a food forest out of it. And then I planted the raspberry canes. I made the no-dig bed, planted up the pear tree, the herb bed in the back. And I also did some uh, loganberries and tayberries in other places of the garden as well. Upcycling is quite important to me because I'd rather use something than discard it. So like the front of the compost bin there is the old gate from by the house. A lot of the pallets are from a local farmer's merchant. The raised beds are all made out of secondhand planks that we've got from around the farm. And uh, I've also planted up an old bath here with the potatoes followed by spring cabbages. I enjoy no dig because it's easy, but this it's got its pros and cons like everything. So like if you if you were to dig, you could just incorporate fresh muck and then leave it over winter, and then that's plantable next spring. Whereas like if you're going no dig, you've got to have like a like a sowable or plantable medium to put down in the first place. All my ideas come from four books. The Herb and Vegetable Expert, the RHS Complete Growing Guide, Hugh Richards' uh, Grow Food for Free, and the Veg in One Bed book. One of the things that might inspire people as well is I did a hinged raised polytunnel out of old bits of alkafene, a guttering pipe, some old battens and some old planks. And then I bought polytunnel plastic and made that all on my own and just if you set your goal on something, just go for it. There's no harm in trying. James Prigioni inspired me to do that. And same with this food forest, really. He inspired me with the, the mulch and the, you know, the growing amongst the trees and stuff sort of style. Sometimes just because there's a tree there doesn't mean that you can't pop something underneath it and still benefit from the land. Here in particular, slug damage is quite high because I've laid the cardboard down and they're hiding under the cardboard at the moment, but I'm hoping that'll only be year one. I also like to do like feeding stations with an organic slug pellet. So like I put it over in the grass and then they'll go away. So it's not actually in the growing area. It's not in contact with food. It's drawing them out as well. Next year, I want to completely mulch all of the grass around the tires, all down the banks here, all tight up to the fence because I've heard that a saying that it takes four years to build a fully functioning garden and it'll be year three next year, so I need to pull my socks up. So another way to increase your growing space is if you've got a slope, you could do it like a terraced raised bed. So I made mine out of secondhand planks. I looked at a few YouTube videos, found a few, and then I just went at it, building it in the shed on a Friday night. It shows that just because it's a slope doesn't mean it's wasted ground. You could always grow something there and benefit from it. This time last year, this whole area was about four foot of brambles, ragwort, docks, ivy. We brought a digger through to pull out all the ivy roots and the ragwort roots and all that. And then I've been working at it since March to get it to a point where we can grow in it. The biggest challenge is working out spacings and stuff, because there's not many straight lines. So you, spacings on a curve can be quite a challenge, but also like just weeding in general, but that'll come with time. What makes me want to grow this amount of food is the fact that 
well, I want to be as self-sufficient as possible. So by growing large quantities of food like this, we can cut down the food bill, saving a bit of money, but then that money, we can put some of it back into the veg. It's like a cycle, if you like, of self-sufficiency. I come home from school every day, then I feed the goats and have a bite to eat. So that takes me till about five o'clock. And then from five till seven, I'll work my socks off in the garden, planting, spreading muck, sowing seeds. After supper then, about half, half past seven, I'll come back out and work for another hour until it goes dark. So in the summer, I might be out until 10 o'clock at night. And then I'll go in and just sit and read a book, or at the moment, it's the Mr. Fothergill seed catalogue. Next year, I won't be doing so many cabbages because the cabbage white is, butterfly is quite bad in this area, especially. But also, like, all this area from here down next year will be carrots and beetroot because they are our staple crops. I think my biggest surprise this year has got to be these beetroot. So they were all multi-sown as three to four in a clump. Everybody was telling me, you know, experienced gardeners of 40, 50 years have been telling me, oh, it won't work, it won't work. And I managed to do it and proved them all wrong. It's just nice to see something work after all these months of waiting. There's two tips, really. One is I'd probably go no dig if you haven't got much time on your hands or if you've got the resources to start off. But second tip that I like going off quite often is go big or go home. You know, I've just gone all out, full hog. I wouldn't say work too hard, but get the job done. Sometimes it could be a bit of a drag weeding docks that you've already pulled and then like the odd root comes back, but they'll go eventually. And like with the cabbages, they look after themselves. I don't bother weeding around them because they're so big. They, they are the main competitors for light. The undercover growing space is a must for any gardener, I think. It's, it's really important to me because it means I can start crops earlier, finish crops later, and start them later again. But most importantly, I can grow tomatoes and cucumbers that you could grow outside, but I don't think they'd last as long with the blight, and we don't really have the weather conditions in the United Kingdom, so having an undercover growing space opens the doors to another lot of plants, if you like. If you haven't tried cucumelons, I highly recommend you do, because you can grow them really close together. Mine are only about an inch or two and a half centimetres apart, and I've got 20 in a row. They're really tasty. They taste like a cucumber with like a, a lemony lime kick, but one thing I have heard people say is you can grow them up your tomato plants because it saves space. Just put one at the base of every tomato plant. But they're really good to pickle, they're really good in salads. And I mean, some of them don't even see out of the polytunnel, to be honest. They're just nice little snacks whilst you're working. Mm -hmm.